Hi, everybody. So the topics for today, we're going to talk about the 18 pointed star or the matrix, so to speak, uh, how the autist collective and the autists um, operate as, as this soul group that they are. And then we'll talk a little bit about now. I'm now already really, I guess, ready for the new earth and the new consciousness platform as they're releasing these um, matrices, like our dark matter matrices, as we talked about, as um, that holds the new consciousness. Um, fallen archangels enmeshed in matter and releasing the quote, old archangels. Now, this is something that I have tried to avoid talking about for a while, but um, uh, yeah, it was uh, pulling at me this time and some images regarding that. Um, the meditation, the intention is um, to build a, build a neutral ether body, correct the electric and magnetic circuitry of our body, clearing the zygote, the first cell, fertilized cell from which we kind of blossomed into this human form. And we'll be working with the 512 embryonic cells, um, clearing our blood resetting our bodies to the original intention of the aeonic pairs, which has to do with the, like sort of the electric magnetic, original um, electric magnetic from uh, God source, so to speak. And then reset all aspects of, the, of our being into oneness and wholeness. So uh, the cradle of Lyra, the Lyrans are very active. This, uh, since that 8-8 portal, now that, stays open it seems um it doesn't i don't it doesn't seem like it's it's you know closes we're used to you know that the, the alignment stays open for a while and then it kind of closes as we shift but that seems to be staying open um now so as we go forward and the cradle of lyra you know we'll talk a little bit more about the cradle of lyra this is uh, an 18 pointed star um, that the autist first showed me in the spring of 2019. And they showed me that this is how their collective operates from. So, you know, if you think that they're souls and we're souls and some of our souls, right? Um, there's many on the planet, star seeds who are in, just as advanced, you know, as these uh, autists in that collective as, as souls. Um, but there's a particular group of them that decided to kind of come together and what holds their consciousness coherent is this uh, star. It's like, um, so they said it's the full star is actually 18 to the third power. So it has 5,832 points. And it's interesting numerologically that five plus eight plus three plus two actually equals 18 again. So they have an uh, obvious reason why um, it's that particular matrix. And, um, you know, we've become like an 18 dimensional universe and they operate from this 18 cubed uh, star matrix. So the evolution of this, uh, as it uh, went on, was uh, then in winter 2019, I kind of got a different image um, of them, of that, of that star. And uh, like it was radiating more, it was becoming more uh, potent and, oh, excuse me one second, I had a tickle in my throat. <clears throat> it was radiating and really, uh, coming into um, into our reality, like it was becoming more physically present through this uh, star. So then, as um, as the months went on, and then the eighteen dimensional, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen dimensions kind of came online. Um, they are, you know, they were showing that they are their star is connected to uh, that sixth harmonic universe. And again, I just have um, these three 18 pointed stars here to kind of represent, because I, you know, I can't draw the, I'm sure somebody out there could, but I couldn't draw um, 
5,832 pointed star. So, um, you know, and we might even imagine that it's because of this uh, star, this because of this matrix that they operate in in that sixth harmonic universe is what perhaps made these six, uh, this uh, 16th, 17th, and 18th dimensions um, kind of coherent. And then since they're here on the planet, then also then accessible to us uh, because they are connected to that physically through their bodies. So. This is sort of how they um, have been uh, transmitting the information to me. So this, you know, I think I probably drew, the, drew this yeah, in 2020 <clears throat> as well. So, um, you know, now it's starting to kind of come together and make sense. And now that all of this is kind of in place and just kind of reiterating that 16th, 17th and 18th dimensions really um, don't quite function like the other 12 dimensions that we're in. And they're more like these fields, um, but we just call them dimensions because for lack of a better term, you can call them another universe. Um, um, but uh, it, it's not quite the same universe, um, the time matrix universe that uh, the 12 dimensions exist in or function as. Um, so let's go to the next one. Uh, so last month in July, I began seeing that uh, sometime after our last meeting, that the six harmonic universes were kind of blossoming. I was kind of seeing it through Sammy. I was seeing these images of uh, a blooming kind of um, sense. And so when I drew it, um, this is what came out. So each layer, there's like this back one, which represents this sixth harmonic universe and then the fifth harmonic universe, um, right, sixth harmonic universe and the fourth, fifth harmonic universe, the fourth harmonic universe, um, the third, I think this is the third harmonic universe. This, this would be the second harmonic universe and this would be the first harmonic universe, which means uh, the first, second and third dimensions and so it's, it's depicted in this green because <clears throat> it's the most physical so now as these new universe the new universal architecture is coalescing and collapsing into its structure so to speak then um now we can really start uh building the new earth and part of that process is to seed uh, the consciousness um, with the new matrices. These would be like the dark matter matrices, I call it uh, black gold matrices. And if you remember from uh, maybe from a few months ago when we first were talking about the um, 16th, 17th and 18th dimensions and consciousness, uh, that there are literally like these um, in the is not space, there is a matrix that enables that a consciousness to be to be held, to make it um, in in the, and that's kind of the subconscious or unconscious of humanity, the platform of it. And so um, when we think about the fact that we can have uh, thoughts or beliefs. You know, and the one that I use a lot is that the universe is abundant, but um, yet in the uh, dark matter or is not space, there's a matrix, uh, a belief system that says um, it's it, the, the earth is, uh, is based on scarcity, you know, and that resources are scarce. So uh, unless we can kind of bring those two in a, into alignment, then um, we can't really affect the mass collective consciousness. Um, and so they're planting these uh, seeds um, to hold uh, in the dark matter or in, yeah, and basically in dark matter 
um, that will hold the new consciousness. And these are, um, you know, belief systems or in, in, in alliance in, in alliance and coherence with the omniversal, uh, basically law of one. And so there are polarized concepts and belief systems in our reality that really don't exist in the omniverse, you know, like, and I use the example of, of being worthy or not worthy, you can't not be unworthy, you know, because it doesn't exist, you know, uh, if you're created from the God source, the one source, I mean, it, you just are, you just, you are deserving, you are worthy, you know, there's no, um, and just even having that word, and you know, implies that there's an opposite, uh, and uh, that's part of the belief system on the planet that there are those who, um, you know, have more resources or hoard resources, and then there's other people that then have to fight for resources. You know, um, that we have to compete against one another to to survive. So it's all these three D paradigm unconscious beliefs that um, has enabled this 3D system to, to operate. And it's, you know, as you can see, it's in all our systems. It's in the government system, it's in the education system, the medical system, that there are beliefs uh, that has to be um, unraveled, eradicated in order for us to be able to plant in a collective, consciousness that is uh, completely different. And, you know, Sammy is reminding me that even our principles of spirituality and what soul is and what God is that um, a lot of it, you know, probably most of it, uh, she says probably like 99% of it is, is going to go. Uh, so it's what we believe about ourselves and why, why we're here, what we believe about karma, all these stories that um, have really not been in alignment with uh, the con cosmic universal um, laws of what it means uh, to be an expression of God's source. So since, since we're ready now, we're, this is uh, being seeded by the autists, you know, and again, that matrix existing or really being anchored in that sixth harmonic universe, they're able to like now release uh, these dark matter matrices for the new consciousness. Um, this image represents just simply the new earth. For those of you who may have been, you know, awesome as a practitioner with Susie Miller, this, the, um, the first image that Sammy had um, projected to me happened, like I still remember it, it was in 2014. I was coming back from Boulder and at the hotel room, I uh, was saying goodnight to my kids. And so when Sammy got on the phone, uh, all of a sudden I saw an image. And this wasn't exactly it. It was more kind of rudimentary, but uh, like this building and a fountain. Um, uh, and I know a lot of other people, you know, have, have seen that as well and have, have uh, talked about it. So this represents, and I asked Amy when she showed me, I said, well, what, what is that? She said, I said, it's the New Jerusalem. And so when I looked up what that means, you know, um, it means new, it translates to, to new earth. And so I didn't use the word Jerusalem here, obviously, because it has other kind of people have other kinds of, um, it triggers uh, sort of a region and a, and a particular religion and things like that. So. Um, but it, you know, literally translated, it means uh, new earth. So, um, and this represents here on this platform is like uh, the upgraded uh, DNA human template, you know, um, and then these are some images and drawings that I've done in the past. And so it, it contains the codes, it contains a lot of the images, contains a lot of codes um, uh, for us to build new communities, uh, I know there's a lot of us out there who've had visions of, you know, a center in different parts of the world. So um, if you feel, you know, drawn to it, you can, people can really use this image to uh, energetically to um, see how it might 
inspire you. So obviously the water, the crystalline waters and uh, plasma water, um, like liquid ether, it brings up all these kinds of new elements and, um, and images. And these are like emotional healing images. This is from the Council of Twelve of the Twelve Galactic Suns. So there's a lot. Um, there's a lot here in this image alone. Oh, and now obviously being ignited and activated um, for preparation. Yeah, I, I drew this. I did this drawing a couple of years ago, um, and so now I'm finally being guided to uh, that. It's time to release it now. Um, yeah, this is like I said. Archangels and things is something that I, you know, kind of have avoided talking about um, because people just flip out, you know, that their the dear archangels could be fallen or um, anything of that sort. People get very, very defensive about that. And, you know, I haven't had negative, quote, negative experiences with with uh, the archangels. I mean, I've seen lots of them, too. When I in my awakening, uh, Metatron and Archangel Michael and um, Jophiel and Raziel, a lot of these archangels, um, you know, have uh, come to my awareness in my awakening process as well. So I personally didn't have negative experiences. I was just kind of stopped working with them because then I had a flood of new archangels that started to uh, come into my awareness. So, but in um, uh, 2020, around the 88 portal at that time, uh, I had this like, spontaneous image and I was shown something like this um, where there was, uh, and they said it was the archangels and they were like trapped in, in matter. So they, uh, their form was like trapped in an interdimensional space between the first and second um, dimensions. And they had this net over them like they're like they're trapped so this is just one representation but anyway i mentioned that because um in this polarity system you have to think about it from the system of polarity and from the fall of tara um where the first angelic human uh existed there were these these archangels and that was part of our blueprint um, was these angelic realms and the archangels, you know, hold a certain uh, blueprint for us, holding certain principles uh, of, from God's source. That means the principles, meaning like energetic consciousness. So it would be things like um, courage and and um, uh, and grace and compassion. Those are energetic consciousness, and so the, the archangels come through imprinted with a certain consciousness uh, of, of those kinds of, of principles, godly principles, we might call them. And so they were also seated on Tara. And um, uh, when Tara fell, so that was a fifth dimensional planet um, existing in this 15, 15 dimensional universe. So you have to imagine like a building I thought I turned that off. Why is it? Um, uh, I know I turned that off. But anyway, so it's like if you imagine a building, you know, from the top uh, that tumbles, implodes in, and it hits all the way down to the basement, then it brought down all the angelic realms as well. So it pulled all of it down. And um, so even the archangels became enmeshed in, um, in, in the matter realm. And so um, what I was shown is that then in this um, bi-wave and polarity system, then uh, they were also split off into, um, into this polarity of a light and a dark, so to speak. Um, and then uh, could be used to project um, light. So, uh, so there are fallen aspects of them, and I and I know people, you know, that 
said they had really bad experiences with Archangel Michael or um, even some of the other archangels. So, um, and I have a, you know, a good friend who was raised um, with a mom, um, very much into uh, satanic rituals and, and spells and um, uh, use, using dark entities and going to these, um, I don't know what they call them, these uh, uh, dark magician kind of people. I don't know what they're exactly called, but they have their own names where they practice satanic rituals and they, you know, I mean, they cut off the heads of chickens and they use the blood for their, you know, spells and hexes and um, and things like that. And she said she, her mother would take her when she was little and so she didn't want to be part of any of it, but um, she would witness her mom, like, you know, she'd have an altar at home. And so um, they'd have like even statues of some of the saints and the archangels. And uh, so they would do things like uh, put gum over their faces or they would put them upside down uh, in, to, to, do their, to do their bidding, to cast their spell, to do um, their black magic, basically. So uh, I thought that was interesting. So um, this is how they, you know, this is part of how they have been used. And because they're enmeshed, have been enmeshed in matter in um, a kind of a sealed off interdimensional space between the first and second dimensions, when we then are, uh, some of us have arch and fallen arch and arch angelic um, aspects like embedded into our, uh, our bodies. So I know part of my clearing, um, you know, especially this, past, this last few months has been clearing um, distorted arch angelic aspects because it's, it, I'm connected to the archangels and, um, you know, particularly on my right side, uh, you know, I had like Joe Fiel and Archangel Michael and seeing their distorted forms. And so part of that is, is in part of my clearing the uh, of old time vector codes um, in particularly in like the, the second and third dimensional levels, which is sacral and solar plexus, you know, is to clear out um, these, uh, fallen archangels um, that are enmeshed, that are enmeshed in matter. So that's my story. And it, you know, again, everybody has to discern for themselves what feels right, right for them. Uh, and I know I've seen in communities, people just going ballistic um, about, you know, are no Archangel Michael is, you know, uh, but again, also used, um, you know, in, in a sense. So, uh, that's just out there for people's consideration. So I was guided at the same, you know, that same time to uh, draw this as well as uh, to release um, these archangels. Uh, this is a Sophianic kind of sun from the 18th dimension. Um, and some of us have a, a chakra, um, it's part of my light body. Uh, so uh, I have this Sophianic um, so chakra, like about 10 feet below my, uh, below my feet as part of my light body. So, and there, there are other people that um, have it as well, or I can open it um, if people are, uh, if, if, if that's appropriate for, for that person. So Sammy has one as well. And um, so it's to release the, these archangels um, out of, uh, being enmeshed in matter. So it's part of their healing as well. And part of the way that I think of it also is that they have uh, completed their tour of duty, so to speak. They were here for a time to support us, um, you know, through an epoch. You know, they were supposed to be supporting Tara and that um, that uh, first race of humans in a fifth dimensional form and then um, became distorted when they fell into matter matter as well. So 
um, I see them as having completed their tour of duty. And now, you know, it's, you know, we can, we can release them. Um, and again, this goes with part of that. What's happening is that, um, like I was saying in the beginning, that even our spirituality, things that we believed, everything is going to be um, dismantled to some degree and our, our uh, awareness and um, about what spirituality is, what the soul is, the basis of spirituality uh, is going to undergo uh, rapid changes as well and upgrades. Now, now the full completion of all the distortions, you know, obviously it's going to be still a couple few hundred years, but, you know, in this next uh, 20 years or so, it's going to start to really change quite a bit. And people are going to have different insights. Um, and especially with the new kids growing up, they're also going to bring new awarenesses um, about what it means to be, um, to be a matter form. I mean, all those things. I mean, it's just, uh, but we have to be kind of willing to release some of those old ideas and also then not get manipulated by um, these other kinds of gurus that are, you know, kind of popping up. Because right now it's a very malleable time and you could see other people that are using kind of similar words and things. And then there's like a twist in there though, you know? So um, it is a tricky time. And so that's why uh, continuing to build your own connection, heart centered connection with your soul and layers of your soul that exist in all dimensions um, is, is important. And I think also right now it's important to, to have faith in ourselves and our own innate goodness. Um, you know, that was one of the things when I started questioning, you know, religion and kind of coming out of uh, the um, Methodist religious kind of teachings and things like that, that I, you know, had grown up with, um, that, uh, you know, you have to start to ask yourself, who am I? And um, I, I just found the core essence of myself that I, I know that I'm a good person. I know I'm a good, good soul here, you know, that I'm not going to buy into these other things. And so kind of when people get confused because all their belief systems are unraveling, you know, I think it's, it's good to um, come back to, to that. So I know all of you listening, you know, kind of know that and that's a core part of your practice, but when you meet other people and, you know, and they're questioning, so what do I hold on to? Well, reality is really being shaken up. What do you hold on to? You hold on to your own innate knowing um, that you are soul and that you are uh, manifested out of the most beautiful and pure love. Uh, and so that uh, got me through um, some of those confusing times when the messages are confusing. And especially now, like I said, it's even more gotten even more crazy now. So, so anyway, um, just some thoughts, you know, about that. So, like I said, you know, I started working with some, the new archangel started to come, come into my awareness. And on our website, we have different images. These are some of the newer ones. They're not, I haven't updated them yet, but um, the Archangel Sophia was one of the first ones that I began to see in uh, 2013. I started to sense her, her presence. Um, and uh, on our website, you'll see that they're not drawn like this. Uh, they were more, I didn't know how to draw angels. Then, so I just drew them as uh, like energy is what you see on our website so far. Um, just a little bit about archangels and why we call them arc. So they're coming through the arc uh, gateway, which is, you know, if you see um, that 15th and 13th dimension, the 15th dimension being the, uh, the father arc, and the 13th dimension is like a mother arc and there's an arc zone that goes into, you know, sort of the omniverse and um, they literally come in through 
through the arc and are they're connected to that arc. And um, there are actually genes associated, our genetics are associated with these principles um, of these archangels. Again, it's the, the energy that they're bringing through. So Archangel Sophiel, the energy that she's bringing through for this time is that it is a benevolent universe because we have not experience that it's a benevolent universe or some people do or you know fragments of us do or, or know it but it's truly to bring that back into our um, entire physical knowingness so you know it might not be easy right now like I definitely can't say that I feel that through every cell in my body um, but this is part of um, this process in assisting us to make this uh, transition to um, another, uh, to this new uh, architecture, uh, universal architecture. Um, so this is Archangel Neathalus, I call him. And again, this is kind of an updated drawing. He, he was another one that I saw um, probably, yeah, in 2013, I started seeing his energy coming through and he was just, barely, barely visible. I just remember and he looked like an old, old man at that time. So these new ones now, they look very um, young because we're, we're starting over again. And yeah, you notice in the other ones too that it's all based on this um, tri-wave or the Trinity, which is the mother, the father and the Christ Sophia, the consciousness um, and that we are the expression of the three principles so Archangel Neathalus is that God flourishes. So, and again, it's kind of bringing that, drawing that cellular knowing into our, into our body uh, and there are genes associated with it. And, and these archangels also then, the lower angels, what we call the other angels are kind of birthed from these arch, archangels with more refined energetic principles you know so like what does it mean when god flourishes it means that everything flourishes our body is like a flourishing blooming flower you know of sacred geometry all coming are all coming together and when we flourish and then everything we touch and everything we create also flourishes and is is blessed so that's the um the message and the principle of Archangel uh, Neathalus. There's some other ones, uh, but they're just guiding me right now to introduce these four here. Um, Archangel, Archangel Jezebel, God loves the human form. And if you've seen it on our website, you know, I mentioned that her name is derived from uh, Jezebel. So Jezebel biblically was, um, like a more of a fallen woman, the heathen, the um, the fall of the matriarch. Um, she's saying so, um, and and this belief then that the human body is dirty, you know, that we're um, unworthy, that we're unclean, and so she brings that the 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 principle uh, and the energy, you know that God loves the human form. God is the expression. Uh, in this human form. And uh, it was interesting that she, uh, Archangel Jezebel, when I drew her, she came out um, kind of uh, in this indigenous kind of color. Um, and again, it wasn't something that I planned and saw in my head, but when I finished and um, I thought, wow, she looks uh, kind, of like a, kind of like an African-American or the darker skinned um, people on the planet who are much more uh, indigenous and really part of the earth. So this is her new um, uh, new drawing. Oh, and I was wondering why, well, is there a reason why they have to look kind of human? Um, and so why do we draw them as if they look human? Uh, and is that just my imagination? Is that something we give them hum kind of these human qualities? And it is because they are bringing, they're, 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 
they, there are actually uh, genes associated with these um, principles that God is, God is human. So even the seraphim angels, you know, uh, are uh, from, you know, these archangels and that that gold ray seraphim DNA then um, is from, particularly, I think from Archangel Jezebel, um, the gold ray uh, seraphim. So those gold strands of DNA, some of them um, are, are from these archangels as well. Um, Archangel uh, Anaclius, God embraces, or the Father embraces the human form. And uh, this one, I wasn't guided to give him a, a face uh, this time. It just, it just didn't look right when I tried to draw a face in his image. And um, I still remember when he started coming through, he was, I could feel him passing through the 15th dimension and all this, there was all this gold uh, energy. Um, and Sammy is, is, is very connected to uh, this Archangel Anaclius. And again, that we have had this belief system kind of imposed on us that the human uh, is dirty, that we are fallen from grace and um, it's bringing back the knowledge that no, the God, the father, particularly the father embraces the human form. And the father aspect of God is like, um, there's very much a protective kind of energy um, about the father. And so his wings, his fire, um, you can just kind of feel the warmth of his presence and him just wrapping his wings around you and uh, protecting you. So um, you can even call an Archangel Necklace as uh, the, the protector. So yeah, I really, really am feeling him. I'm getting really hot uh, today from that. So these are just four that I was guided to um, finally introduce uh, formally here. And then um, there'll probably be, I can't remember how many I've drawn so far. There's like three or four more other ones that I'll uh, bring um, probably next month. Okay, so let's see. Any questions about that or uh, any comments? If anybody has any, it's okay if you don't. Hey, Susan. Yes. Yeah, um, I just, I, I'm noticing a lot of similarities in, in a kind of a description of what's going on from another individual's perspective. And, and she speaks of a um, set of like archetypes, I guess, maybe that she calls the progenitors mm. or, you know, like the initial, um, I guess, <clears throat> creators of souls. I guess, and that they were hijacked and, you know, just recently they've been um, just kind of, I'm not sure what the wording would be. They've been taken out of the hijack situation, right? They've been yeah. um, recreated, I guess, um, from source. And it, you know, I'm just curious, these, these uh, new archangels, they, they're kind of sounding similar in description to what she was describing. Like one is called the enforcer and mm around helping a lot there's one that's that's doing a lot with the gold um on the planet mm. and removing the negative energies from that gold and mm -hmm. anyways that I, I, yeah I love, I love this this the similarities i'm not sure if it's the same subject but i'll see if you mm -hmm. no i think it's you know i think it's it's it certainly seems similar um to me as well from what you're describing uh progenitors you know i think the archangels are Probably a little different than what the what we might call the progenitors. Mm. You know, I mean, they the progenitors might be like the founder kind of races, um, in that uh, you know, like, like the Lyrans kind of. So there are like these new, and they kind of bring these new um, principles in as well. Because 
you know, there are kind of these different lineages, some of his angelic line, kind of lineage, and then there's, uh, you know, other kinds of lineages and other types of um, Christ consciousness uh, beings, you know? So um, I think that's why uh, out there, some don't really feel like they're angelic, you know? So it's like a different lineage, a different lineage of the Buddhic consciousness, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, all, all part of kind of Christ consciousness uh, Christ consciousness as well and but I like that idea of progenitors as well the um, uh, the, the sort of the holders of, of of these new genes you know that they have to come in somehow and they and having some kind of a form it's almost like being able to package it you know to keep it right. kind of coherent you know okay. um, so yeah I like that and um, the, this idea of souls that were hijacked, um, hmm. uh, Lisa, Lisa Renee in um, Energetic Synthesis, you know, she, she talks about that, that they, we were never supposed to be in this kind of um, reincarnation cycle where you're continuously, they, like these trapped souls have been trapped in this, um, like this 12 dimensional universe, you know, and then kind of enforced in, in into this reincarnation cycle. And then there's that story of, you know, um, well, you did this wrong in this past life, so now you're gonna correct that. And so you're, you know, you're paying for that mistake in the past and you have to keep learning and learning and learning, you know, uh, and going through these re reincarnation cycles. So um, th that's the idea of these hijacked souls that a lot of these souls, um, a lot of souls were were kind of hijacked uh, and living in this kind of this fallen system. Um, and I do have to say, you know, uh, I brought it up before, but a couple of years ago too, I did I did draw this image um, where I saw between between the um, ninth and tenth dimension there was like a hole or um, a space that was created and um, it was holding a lot of uh, soul fragments of, of us really, like there was a lot of soul fragments being caught in, in this uh, ninth and 10th inter interdimensional field. Um, and so, you know, we were recovering, you know, soul aspects from there, but, um, you know, it looked like that, that there was a lot of people <laughs> that had part of their souls, um, soul fragments like hijacked and were, you know, in that, in that space. <laughs> so. Yeah. It's um, beautiful. It's a time of liberation for a lot of, on a lot of levels. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it is, you know. Can I ask um, you a Tara question right quick and you let me know if that's. Yeah, go ahead. Indicated here or another moment. So with the fall of Tara and it being, from what I understand, blown up. Um, mm -hmm. One one um, perception that I, that I've been looking at was that there was a certain um, I don't know if it's archangel type of presence or or just an, an entity with the uh, that's the one that they were talking about the enforcer that was one that chose to go ahead and blow that because um, the the um, dark energy type entities were. Um, inundating that and basically had had kind of infested <laughs> infested that that world right and were contained with, within its core so the only way that they could um keep everything from really falling apart was go ahead and blow the place <laughs> kind of a thing so does that um hmm. ring uh, you mean you mean like tara yeah tara mm -hmm. yeah that there was a lot of wars um mm -hmm. yeah. you know that was uh that was bleeding through um yeah, I'm not sure exactly, you know, from my perspective, I mean, the kids kind of talked about that, you know, a few years ago, and other people have a different, different, um, different uh, historical memory, you know, uh, you know, about that. But I, I, what you just said, there, there does seem to be something to that, like, um, there was uh, some sort of battle that had gone on for um, a long time um, 
with the, the invasion of this other universe, the other universal kinds of beings, and um, that the humans, we somehow contributed to, to that. And so the fall of Tara is like to come into dense matter so that we could literally clean it up, you know? And that, and so um, we we're supposed to ascend from that lowest, quote, lowest level of, of matter, you know, first, second, and third dimension, where it's like, you know, the, the dense matter. Um, so we were supposed to, um, it's like, so then as we ascend, we're like integrating each of those layers or each of those dimensional pieces, putting it back together in our physical body, cleaning it up, you know, and then continuously ascending back, you know, uh, to that pu the purity of that form. So I feel like what you just said, there is, um, there is something in that there. And, um, but then it was during this process, it was further hijacked so that we could not ascend, you know? And uh, that's, it, it seems that's what happened, particularly in the last 5,500 years since the rise of the humans in, you know, Mesopotamia, Sumeria, where we're told that's where humans began, you know, that's like, and that's, they erased all the other memories of, you know, the, uh, Atlantis and Lemuria and uh, you know the other earth and things so um, it seems that that was there was really a, a, an alien invasion um, from from the draconians and the um, reptilians um, in that cycle of Sum when Su Sumeria and uh, Mesopotamia when the human was rising out again and um, they just, they, that's when this fallen matrix was really created, you know, um, and all the intricate reversals, um, that was put in so that we really could not ascend. I guess it happens even further back when the Luciferian rebellion from like 26,000 years ago. Um, but it seems that the, the most extreme happened, you know, during this uh, last cycle when we really became very, very dense humans, and with all these reversals put in um, into our bodies, why is why we age and we, you know, can't uh, seem to release emotional baggage and we have disease and um, chromosomal an an anomalies and disease and things like that. So, well, I love what you were saying earlier, how that. Just even that, just the belief systems and things like that are just being remapped right now. That's perfect. Yeah, yeah, we have to. Just clear it. Uh-huh, yeah. yeah, we have to right. because Let's we can't continue on. Up. Right, let's clear it, not blow it up this time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, we can't, yeah, I don't think, other way. I don't think we can blow it up, yeah, anymore. Um, well, and the other, as you can see, the global agenda is to try and, um, you know, have us blow us our, blow ourselves up again you know, mm -hmm. so to speak, yeah. so that then you can wipe out our memories again, and then you start civilization over again, and, um, you know, and, uh, you know, you start all over again, but really it's where we're just recycling the same patterns, you know, mm -hmm. right. um, yeah, and, you know, it's interesting, I, I, you know, some of you have probably heard him, uh, you know, David Martin, he's the, um, he's the, um, you know, the guy, bow tie guy, let me just say, uh, um, but anyway, I was listening to him on one of his uh, talks lately, and interesting, I don't think he's woo, -woo like this, but he was referencing uh, Sumeria, and that all our problems go back to Sumeria. <laughs> um, he figured it out, like the financial systems, everything he said started then, because even um, if you look at the hieroglyphs in the, in the caves in, um, I guess in like Iraq or Iran or whatever, that they were trading opium even then. And so to sedate the masses and keep us kind of uh, in a state really of sedation and just uh, unawareness and, and uh, addicted goes back to then. And so he's like all our financial system, everything, it's always been based on 
drug trade and drug deals. I mean, so I thought that was, uh, I thought that was really interesting that he um, pinpointed it to that, that point as well. So anything, just an FYI. Yeah, we definitely keep repeating those silly cycles, but we're done with that. Moving on. Okay. Somebody else said. <laughs> no, oh. I just mean, you know, as this time we're, we, we've got a different way of doing it. Yeah. Yeah. A little yeah. easier, a little cleaner. Mm -hmm. little, yeah. Yeah. I was just looking at the chat really quick because somebody just commented. Wow. So, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, you would, you would think that it's, um, when you first hear about it, you think it's all science fiction. This can't be true, but based on what we're seeing going on now, um, it certainly seems like it's true, you know? So just going through um, the energy foundation for the meditation, uh, this is something I know I put out there before and some of you uh, have seen it. This uh, is healing, the, called the healing of Vesica Pisces. And this was another image that was uh, brought to me through the Lyrans. Uh, I think it was in 2020, 2021, yeah, last year sometime early. Um, it was a, one of those funny visions I was having, like all of a sudden I saw all these lyrans like way above my head and they were like literally lower, lowering this image down to me. I was like, what is that? Um, so it's called the healing of Vesica Pisces. So uh, the two principles of masculine and feminine we've talked about before and before that the bi-wave, the Vesica Pisces that the flower of life is based on is um, inorganic, but there is a kind of a natural or organic kind of vesica Pisces. And it's the original sort of um, masculine and feminine or father and mother that came together. And so this is healing that whole space that goes deep all the way through back to source. Um, but the reason why I mentioned that is because even, um, not even just thinking about masculine or, or feminine, there's a, um, a term called aonic pairs, which is the original kind of positive and negative forces um, in, let's say the cosmos or the omniverse. I don't know what came first. Does mother and father come first or did these two forces come first? So um, the aonic pairs of positive and negative or like the proton and the neutron, um, behind it right without these two forces you couldn't have um even matter because it literally brings attracts uh what we call opposite charges together to be able to enable us to have a form so uh this is kind of the foundation of what we're uh, also going to work on work with today because it also then um affects the electric and the magnetic uh, currents that move through us. And the, um, it's also what bridges all aspects of our being. You know, when we say the top and the bottom, the left to right, right to left, inner to outer, outer to inner, back to front, front to back. Um, it's this uh, original uh, ionic, ionic pairs, meaning A, E-O-N-I-C um, pairs coming together that even holds our body together and is going to enable us to function in uh, wholeness, meaning all our body parts and body systems has to act as a whole, even if they individually have um, a different function. Um, so obviously the cradle of Lyra obviously opened up with uh, the 8 8 portal, really opened up now and really streaming uh, down all the way down to the first dimension. So the way I was shown it when I first saw this in sort of a half dream state um, is that from that uh, 13th, 14th and 15th dimension, the fifth harmonic universe, there's the founder races and they give their genetics, meaning these light fibers, let's say, um, or light kind of geometries um, that enable our genes to become physical. So they give their, they created the human template and then they seeded it in 
the cradle of Lyra. So this is where the angelic genes and all the genes of um, these vast, vast God expressions um, giving their gene to be, for the human to be an expression of God. And so then from that, uh, when they seed it in the cradle of Lyra and it um, comes down through dimensionally, again, from higher vibration to lower vibration, um, we, it makes up the full human um, template in all 12 dimensions. So some people see dragons in there. Some people see like I, you know, see thousands and thousands of points of light um, that are emanating from there and um, angels and just golden and white angels and just very, very rich um, world. So that's why it's called the cradle of, of Lyra and, you know, Ly the Lyra's being um, like one of our primary ancestors of the human form. And we're also going to work, be working with uh, the zygote, the, which is the, um, your cell when the egg and the sperm fertilize from your mother and father. Um, you know, many of you know that that's called the zygote, the first cell and uh, this is showing what the symbol in there actually is so this is from the ruby flame dragon and um this symbol uh, represents the phoenix the golden phoenix rising out of the the ashes so this particular image is uh cleaning the zygote um, of your original cell and then we're going to do some energy work around that um, with that, that clearing and the meditation. And this is, um, so this is just showing that this is what that uh, egg of life is made out of. It's, it's eight of those uh, cells. So what you see here is seven cells, but there's actually eight because there's one behind and underneath this one. So directly behind this one is a is an eighth cell and that's called the uh, makes up what some call the egg of egg of life, the eight immortal cells that remain in the perineum area, or the tailbone. Um, and it's actually in the two dimensional form, it looks like a you know a, a sphere in the center and, a, and seven spheres around it, but it forms like a cube. So this is one cube at the top and this is the bottom cube underneath it. So just showing you that that's where that um, comes from. And, and then it's also in the uh, Lotus of Life in that image in the, in the center there. So they told me, um, Sammy, you know, showed me an interesting story, you know, about this that we're gonna work with. Um, so, this, um, so let's say, well, I should have put probably a zero. Let's say right from out of zero point, the egg and the sperm um, conceive. And from that one cell, the one cell, you know, splits into two, two splits to four, four splits to eight. Uh, and then these eight cells, then these eight cells become the egg of life, right? Well, after eight, uh, eight is an exponential number meaning it's like two to the third power. And notice that these numbers keep coming up. The two, meaning like the aionic pairs or the mother and father, right? And then when they uh, came together and the third principle was born, then we have Christ consciousness and the Trinity and the tri-wave. So two to the third power, meaning two times two times two, three twos. And it's an exponential number because then when we get to this eight, that remains, but then it goes through rapid, rapid uh, divisions. So then eight goes to 16, 16 becomes 32, 32 becomes 64, 64 becomes 128, 128 becomes 256, uh, and 256 becomes 512. So notice that, um, you know, I've, I kept seeing this for like the last couple of months, like there's something with 
this 512 uh, because 512 actually comes from eight cubed, eight to the third power. And it's the ninth division. So again, here we see this nine, right? And when we were talking a few months ago, we were talking about the nine original universes. Um, and uh, nine is also an exponential number. Nine is three cubed. So, you know, there's something, there's really something really interesting going on in the language of uh, these numbers and particularly these exponential numbers. So then um, I was guided to uh, look at the 512 cells after that division. And so, of course, then I had to draw them um, somehow. So you see, this is one way of looking at it. And then I was like, well, what if we looked at it like a, like a, like, like a circularly? So there are 12 of them. That's why you, you kind of see fuzziness because I put 256 on top of 256. And seriously, there's 200, 512 of these uh, in uh, each of these images. So yeah, this is one perspective and this is another sort of perspective. And um, this is interesting because right, once it gets to this 512 point is when um, it explodes, it, uh, you know, part of it becomes the placenta and then it starts to, that's when it starts to divide into uh, the different body components, the body parts. So um, I was shown the story. Let me see if I can go back to the other one. Oh, where's the other one? Uh, so I was shown the story that, um, that, uh, so here's the zygote. So the zygote appears and then something goes boom, right? And it's the breath of spirit. Breath of spirit whew, blows or ignites that zygote. And then it starts, that's when the cell division start. So I was like, wow. So cell division starts after um, spirit infuses it. Like you are here and you have a purpose, boom. There it is right there. So spirit has breathed life into you, okay? And then it starts to divide. And then when it gets to this point, it, it kind of pauses and this, this part remains. And then it goes through rapid division again, right? Until you get to this. And so now here, or actually at, the, at this point, we actually, your soul, your soul, in all its dimensions, starts to engage these, these cells, okay? And so now your soul and your personal soul matrix is literally imprinting you with your soul purpose right, right then and there. It's like, boom, it starts right, it starts right there. And that's why then, um, we have certain attributes. So you might have things that you inherit and you might have look like your father in this way or your mother in this way. You might have some personality traits of one or the other, but you know, it's like, why do you have certain talents? Why are you drawn to this profession and not that profession? Why uh, you know, do you prefer this and not that? So all these things are imprinted into you based on your unique soul uh, mission in your soul trajectory so this the soul union actually begins here and so then it starts to divide into you know the placenta part of it becomes a placenta and then you start to um it goes into its specialized uh areas of the different organs and the different body systems now they also showed me that from that first point of conception in this um, fallen matrix that we've been in, literally they start to imprint us with implants and um, entity attachments. It starts right there. Uh, I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so um, part of what we're gonna do today is actually then do, then do clearing at um, these uh, different stages. So I was like, holy smokes, this is really cool. Um,
So, the, and I thought it was fascinating that literally, you know, your soul is beginning to work into you energetically um, to activate your, uh, your genes, activate your genes. And we activate them based on uh, the various elements that we have available to us, right? Earth, matter, no, earth air, fire, and water, the four that we've been working with. Well, what's been missing is the ether. The ether element plays a very, very important part in um, enabling us to be kind of hold, hold a level of neutrality and feel balanced within having the magnetic and the electric uh, systems in our body function uh, properly. So we're gonna be working, we're gonna be working with that. Today, um, this is a um, something that I drew in 2020, and so this is transforms the cellular matrix, readjusts the cellular matrix to the new uh, up, upgraded blueprint of the human. This is the ether body. Where's the rest of it? Um, so now we're bringing back in this element of ether represented by the dodecahedron which the dodecahedron before was being used, um, oh, what did they call, what did we call them before? That icky gooey stuff. <sighs> Can't remember right now, but it looks like this too. Um, so anyway, we're bringing it, we're bringing it back. Um, so this is icosahedron, the element of water, earth, um, icosahedron, no, this is the tetrahedron element of fire and uh, octahedron, the element of air, I believe. So um, this is sort of the new bio-spiritual kind of plasma uh, body that's being formed in this kind of cylindrical rectangle. Um, it came, it's coming, came through from the fifth harmonic universe uh, and it's new because then we added a sixth harmonic universe. And um, this is also going to help the autists to embody and, and give them ease in their body as well with their sensory, their unique sensitive sensory system. So it encompasses our entire uh, 12D self in this um, rectangular cylinder. It re-encodes the light body also and also is going to assist us in making density changes, especially this element of ether, bringing this element of ether back in. Um, and again, bringing the electric and magnetic system into neutralities um, and also then calming the nervous system and facilitating the dissolution of mental and emotional debris, debris to be cleared from uh, the body. So this is a uh, hatat. It's a symbol that Sammy had shown me several years ago. Uh, it, it's a pixie which cleanses the blood. So I redrew it lately and because uh, there's some new energy coming in with it. The background of it was kind of um, like a lavender color and then there's this peridot color and it's cleansing the blood. And what it's cleansing is, um, it's cleansing uh, hexes, curses, um, from our blood, because you know a lot of the satanic rituals and things they've used blood a lot, uh, and the the concept of vampires is that they're soulless beings and they have to drink the blood because they they don't they can't they they can't sustain their bodies or their life unless they take it from another living being that has is carrying that life force and um, it's usually through the blood so the blood and circulating um, life force is, you know, is, is very critical to our uh, survival. And, uh, you know, interesting that these, you know, so-called shots, so to speak, are um, really injecting people with um, uh, spikes, so to speak. So we're gonna also work with the uh, star icosahedron opening the star icosahedron and uh, the star icosahedron is important because it actually connects 
us cosmically to the electric and the magnetic uh, currents of the of the cosmos. So, and the five pointed star comes out of the star cost region. So you can kind of see the five pointed star in there. You look carefully. You know you can see it. Right. This is point one, two, three, four, five. And so we talked about this before. Like this is Je Leonardo da Vinci's drawing of the human and the proportions as a um, as this pentagon figure. And if you've ever seen the Baphomet or the satanic pentagram, it's upside down, meaning that these two points are up and this one is down. That's why it's satanic. And they usually show Baphomet, a goat figure, and like these two would be the ears on top or the horns on top. Um, again, that's the, the reversal, the, the inverted um, uh, human template. And that's why we've only been aware of like the seven body chakras. It's only why we've only been aware of a certain aspect of our being in this uh, bi-wave system and not aware uh, of the full nature of who we, of who we are. So one thing we're, we're gonna do during the meditation um, is we're gonna go through these uh, 20, 20 points because the star icosahedron actually has 20 points to it. It's a 20 pointed star, which it's hard to see here right now. Um, somebody has a comment or a question. Let me see. That uh, the new kids born after 12, 2012 didn't come in with the overlay of usual baggage and negative programs. That was the case before that. Um, yeah, the 20, 2012, um, there's a level that they didn't come that they didn't come in with, um, but again they're imprinted with um, so there there are different levels based on how the planet has opened up. So the kids between um, twenty twelve and twenty like sixteen. Are, have a particular kind of uh, light body um, imprint. And then after, particularly like 2017, when things really started to change between 2018 in particular to 2022 or um, 2000 or 2020, you know, it's another kind of imprint. And then uh, 2020, I, I feel like they were born with um, their high hearts open. So uh, the high heart being at that um, thymic level where then they're activating the unity consciousness on the planet. Um, you know, some say, well, they're coming in with their full DNA activated, I don't quite see that because um, it's kind of a, a sequential process um, because we can't, you know, that's part of the evolution and the ascension aspect of it. So um, it's, you know, it happening, it's happening in stages and our density has to change and it's gonna undergo rapid changes from about 2020 to 2040. Um, and then 2040 to 2060, you know, so it's it's slowly upgrading, gradually upgrading the DNA that is gonna manifest, you know, that's activated and manifesting. So 2022 obviously is another major change um, because now we have, we're really activating the new uh, 18 dimensional uh, universal system. So, and, so, you know, how it's different, I'm not, I'm not really sure right now. So I kind of see it kind of happening in stages. Uh, but yeah, the 20 kids born after 20, 2012 and after are different. The kids born from like 2000, you know, to that 2012 were also different. Um, they're not uh, as easily 
um, kind of fooled to some degree, um, although you see a lot of them are kind of falling into some of this uh, manipulation manipulation as well. So, so and I hope that helps, but that's, that's kind of the way, you know, I see it. it's been kind of happening and it's kind of happening in stages. Um, I don't know if you can see me. Can you, can you all see me at all? Can you see me now? Um, Cause I just want to go through this one thing. So with the star icosahedron, there's going to come a point when I'm going to have you um, touch these points, okay, on your hands and on your and not uh, on your toes. So it goes it goes like an inch or so above each of the fingers. And if you don't feel it, that's okay. There's a point there um, that that you connect to. And so the right hand is, uh, it goes electric, magnetic, electric, magnetic, electric. The left hand goes magnetic, electric, magnetic, electric, magnetic. And it's from the star icosahedron. And then on your toes, it goes, it crisscrosses over. So like right hand is electric, magnetic, et cetera. The left foot, the toes, it's about a, an inch out as well, goes electric, magnetic, electric, magnetic, electric. And then same thing with your right foot, it crosses over from your left to the uh, right foot. And again, so it's about an inch from where your fingertips would be. And you're just gonna touch that. That's gonna, um, that's connected to the electric and magnetic. And, and we're gonna, it's going to help to uh, balance that electric and magnetic in our uh, in our bodies as well in our part of our nervous system. So just had to let you know that. Okay, so let's keep going because I know it's probably late. Yeah. Oh, somebody had a qu uh, question or something. Uh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, you could see me. All right. Great. Okay. So we're also going to. Uh, this is Wellesley. Uh, it's a non-dimensional kind of being that uh, weaves interdimensional spaces. Since we're multidimensional, we access dimensions through our chakra system, but then we also like obviously weave through all these interdimensional in interdimensional ways. And um, that's how our, our organs and body systems function is through this interdimensional connection. So it's, we're gonna get coherence on that. And um, this is the mother of the vector code, so new time vector codes, that means. So we're going to be drawing your unique uh, time vector codes. And this is an amber flame I call Hagen. She uh, is pretty new to the scene. Uh, and she, her breath is able to close up portals and wormholes that we've been connected to, to bringing in all that gunk. And then this is um, image is really about soul coherence, um, and also then imprints into the 512 embryonic cells. This image is also based on eight cubed, so there's eight of these petals, and then there's three um, of these uh, these flowers in each in each layer. So I'm trying to go go quickly now because I know I'm looking at the time. So um, all our body systems, I'm gonna go through all the body system, the electric and the magnetic. And so I just have a list for myself so I don't uh, kind of forget. And um, the platform for our stability, uh, right? So, so the intention of the meditation is building the neutral ether body, correcting the electric magnetic circuit of our body, clearing of our zygote and 512 embryonic cells, the clearing of our blood, clearing and dissolving all implants and attachments which are embedded during cell division, resetting our bodies to the original intention of the ionic pairs and reset all aspects of being to oneness and wholeness. So you want to just get comfortable in your own space. And 
Take some deep inhales and exhales. I hope this was helpful. Thank you for hanging with us because I know uh, ooh, this was a two hour, two hour session, but um, it was jam packed. And yeah, I was, uh, I mean, I was really surprised by the information and just, um, I was uh, excited. Uh, to share this with all of you. So thank you very much. And we will see you again next month. The recording will be up uh, shortly after we close. So thank you and blessings to you all.